Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Carl Diaz. I'm with the uh, University of Colorado Denver and Learning Resources Center. And today we're going to uh, talk about Newton's second law. So uh, before we get started, I just want to talk about these generalities real quick. So uh, if you watch the first law video, then you know these pretty well, but it's, you know, it's good to always go through them. So keep in mind, Newton, Newton's laws relate forces to motion that's what they do that's the point of newton laws is to relate forces to motion okay they don't do anything else or more motion to forces right if i if i have if i know something about the forces applied to an object i can describe its motion predict its motion if i know something about an object's motion i should be able to describe the forces on it okay and newton laws let us do that give us that relationship so what does that mean? If you're asked a question where like you're given, well, you know, this the, the motion of object or something about its displacement and they want to know the forces, Newton laws connect those ideas together. Or if they tell you how much force is applied to an object, they want to know how far it went or something like this. Newton laws connect those ideas. That's what we're trying to say. OK. And so just just, you know, the first law, right? first and the second law they kind of separate the first and second law are a little, trying to do something a little bit different than what the third law are doing but they're all related right and the first and second law are about total forces on an object where the first law relates net force to objects at rest or at constant velocity okay so the first law is trying to relate net force to objects at rest or constant velocity where the second law and that's what this video is going to be about relates net force to objects speeding up slowing down or changing direction okay so a little bit different okay and the third law is about individual forces applied on individual objects, okay? It's going to be a little bit different. It's, it's going to be on a separate video. Make sure you watch it. It, it you know, it's all kind of works out. You'll see. I'll explain on the video how it all works out. But, but this is the um, idea here. So keep in mind that this video is not about what tension is, what friction is, and this types of thing. That is not what this is about. I mean, in general, you should know forces of push or pull or it's an interaction between two objects or an object in its environment, okay? An object, when you say, well, okay, between two objects makes sense, what's an object in its environment? Well, that's like an electron in an electric field, okay? Or something like this, okay? Keep in mind, you'll learn this when you talk about conservation of energy, but one, one property that force has in terms of the universe is force transfers energy into or out of objects and that's you know again it's, it's just a little tease but it has to do with what we're talking about because if you ask yourself what is it about force that makes an object speed up what is it or, or not force what is it about a net force that makes an object speed up what is it about a net force that makes an object slow down or what is it when 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 you know there's a force applied to an object but it doesn't make it speed up or slow down that all has to do with how much energy that force is giving or not giving that object and so I thought it was appropriate to mention it here, but you'll, you'll talk about it in conservation of energy, okay? Remember that here in this last part, the very bottom, that net force is required to set an object in motion or to change an object's speed or direction when it's in motion. That's what this video is about. We're gonna get into detail about that, okay? But that's really, really important to understand, all right? And the, the very, very last part's a caveat I'm gonna to continue to remind you of, but constant net force is not required to keep an object in motion. Okay, if I hit a hockey puck across the ice, it's gonna slide. There's no friction from the ice, right? So that's not being applied in, on the object or on the hockey puck and I'm not pushing it on it, on it anymore. So, 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 you know, when, when you're no longer applying a force to an object, that force is no longer acting on an object. You know how sometimes they ask you, okay, you hit a baseball. Now, once the baseball's flying through the air or leaves the bat, is the force from the bat still acting on the ball? No, it's not. No, no. If you're not making contact with the object, if you're a contact force, then the force isn't being applied. The only place where that's not true is in electric fields or gravitational fields, okay? So don't freak out. So in your everyday stuff, especially physics one, right? Physics two, that's more related, but physics one, everything's great contact forces here. We talk a little bit about gravity, but still contact force, okay? So just keep that in mind, okay? So 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 objects, if the you know they can move without force being applied to them, and if there's no friction or anything, the object's not going to slow down. Like if a hockey puck on ice, it's just going to continue to slide forever and ever. Its velocity isn't going to change, which means its speed or direction isn't going to change. It's just going to slide across the ice, unless you come and hit it with the force larger than its inertia. And that's what we're going to talk about here. 
So hopefully that makes sense. Now, before we get going into Newton's second law, I just want to remind you, and please go watch the video on inertia, okay? But it's important to understand this, okay? That why does an object want to remain at rest or a constant velocity? Essentially, I know you might be saying, well, I thought this was about Newton's second law. But this is kind of, you could ask this in a different way. You could say, why does an object, you know, you know, how, you know, why does it take effort to make an object speed up or slow down or change direction, right? That's another way you could ask this question up above, right? Why does it take effort to make an object speed up or slow down or change direction? And again, that answer would be because of inertia. That's what that first part is saying. The second part is saying inertia. Now, again, if you want to get into detail, please go watch the video on inertia. This video is not going to get into it. This video is about I mean, second law, but it's important to say. Inertia is an object's resistance to a change in motion, right? So, and it's, and it's a value, it's something you have to overcome. So if I'm gonna make something speed up or slow down or change direction, I'm gonna to have to apply enough force to overcome that, okay? And that's essentially what this bottom part's saying. So when a net force is applied to an object at a minimum, sometimes it's more than just this, okay? But at a minimum, the net force that needs to be applied to that object has to be it larger than the object's inertia and if you're like well what what is that value i need a i want to have a feeling for what that value is right well that's uh that's uh uh, uh the, the way to think of everyday inertia is, is mass that's the best way to quantify it think of a value it's like objects masses are essentially give us the uh, conceptual good conceptual understanding and and, and quantitative understanding which is like a number value, magnitude understanding of what an inertia is, okay? So if you want to know more, go watch the video on inertia. That's all I'm going to say about it now, but that's why if I'm going to speed up, I'm going to slow down or an object speeds up or slows down or changes direction, it requires some effort. It's the inertia, okay? So um, what's Newton's second law? Start with that, Okay. The, if you look in any physics textbook, crack open any physics textbook, this is what it says, okay? No sayings or anything like this. It just states the net external. Now, it's important to say external here, okay? You might be saying, why? What's the point of that? Of course, no. Think about it. Like, can you grab, like, if I lift up on my pants, I'm applying force, but, you know, or let's say me. Let's say I lift up on my hips in some way. I can't pick myself up to the ceiling, right? That's impossible. So essentially, you know, internal forces, they, they can't really do anything much in terms of motion, but external forces, very important. Okay, so if a net external force acts on an object, then it will cause that object to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Okay, that's the Newton's second law. That's how it's stated. That's what it means. The net external force acts on an object, then it will cause that object to speed up, slow down, or change direction. Okay. And again, Newton's second law relates net forces to changes in direction, okay? Where the first law relates net forces to, to constant velocity or, 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 or objects at rest. Newton's second law, and Newton's first law is not a special case of, of the second law. Newton's first law is trying to talk about something totally different. I just said that. It's about equilibrium and that rest and constant velocity. Newton's second law is trying to talk about something entirely different. It's trying to talk about changes in velocity, just changes in speed and direction, or, all right? And so Newton's second law is really trying to just relate net force to changes in, in motion, which is what this little part right there is saying, okay? So the equation's pretty straightforward, right? If, if we want to relate an equation to this idea, right, where we say that the sum of net force, right, which again, when we think of net force, we want to think of superposition on superposition of, of force vectors. If you don't know what that means, go watch my video on superposition of force vectors. All these videos I'm telling you to go watch are very short, okay? But go watch superposition. It gives you an idea, okay, of what we mean by F net, okay? So that can be a confusing thing. Trust me, I get it, all right? That's why I made that video about superposition of forces because F net is essentially where we take all the forces and combine them into one, right? All the force vectors and combine all those force vectors into uh, 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 one, 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 one vector. 
okay? One, one, one force vector that we call the net vector. So keep in mind, sometimes you'll hear this equation called the fundamental equation of motion. And I, I see that I don't have equation written out. So fundamental equation of motion. Okay, sometimes you'll hear it call that, you know, it helps us, it helps us derive equations of motion. It helps us derive equations of motions for, for just boxes and things sliding across the ground, or it helps us derive equations of motion for boxes on a, on a spring or boxes that act as a pendulum or something like this. Okay, so it's a very powerful equation. Okay, very powerful, very, very important. But remember, the only time you use it or the only appropriate time to use it is if there's a net force on an object. And just like we said with Newton's first law, you're going to be able to recognize it, okay? It's not a guessing game. If an object is speeding up, you already know. You don't have to go calculate anything. This science law is telling you to memorize you memorize this okay because it's a law and you memorize it and and when so, you know like you're reading a problem they say oh there's a net force applied to this object well you already know it's going to be speeding up slowing down or changing direction if they tell you the net force is in the same direction as, as displacement you know it's going to be speeding up if they tell you if it's an opposite direction you know it's going to be slowing down okay and then the changing direction that's for a different video but the the, the net force will be in towards the center of motion well so that's that's for a different video but but the point is is that if you know an object is speeding up slowing down or changing direction you already know there's a net force applied to it there's no question you don't sit there and go oh are the force is balanced that that object's speeding up are the force is balanced or is there a net force no they, what are you talking about there's no way the forces can be balanced. The only way the forces are balanced is if it's at rest or constant velocity. It's speeding up. You already those know that there's a net force on that object. And you already know it's in the direction, what direction it is in. If the object's speeding up, you know the net force is in the same direction as it's moving. And if you know that it's slowing down, it's in the opposite direction, okay? I, I, I got a picture here to show you because it's, 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 that important okay so when objects speeding up right we know that net force and i say it right here it's at the very top net force and displacement are in the same direction okay when an object's slowing down we know net force and displacement are in opposite direction okay that's very important to memorize so if we, why because you already know information if we tell you something we say hey this box is speeding up to the right then you know that net force is in the same direction as displacement. The problem isn't going to tell you that. You know now because of the words that were given to you. Or if we tell you the object's slowing down, you know that the net force is opposite the direction of, of the, the way it's moving. You already know because of the concepts. There's no calculation to, have to go in there and calculate anything on your calculator or anything, okay? It's really important to understand that. Okay, and so here, like again, this is this video isn't about drawing free body diagrams and, and doing equations. I have a totally different video for that. Okay, that is not the point of this. Is this, this? I'm just trying to give you some examples here so that you understand the whole process through. Okay, but if you know an object speeding up, right? They're going to give you some situation. You're going to be able to draw this free body diagram, right? And obviously, you can see that my my this force, right, is larger. Sorry about that. This this force is larger than this one. So it's going to be a net force here, right? You, we know that when we do the superposition of these vectors, and again, if you don't know what that means, go watch the video I made for you so you understand it. But when we combine these two vectors to make one vector, the push and friction, when we combine those two vectors to make one vector, which would be this one right here, I drew it for you. Okay, that net vector. We know that there's going to be some push left over. Why? Well, we didn't have a problem that the problem didn't need to tell us. The question didn't need to tell us. We knew if the object was speeding up. The net force was in the direction of the way we're moving. The only force that's in the direction of the way we're moving is the push. So that must be the net force. See how you can already tell what it is and say what it is by the science, not calculating anything. Okay. And because I know these things, I can write equations. Again, I know the science. I can write these equations, okay? I can draw this free body diagram, okay? So again, this video isn't about writing these equations or free body diagram, but we know in the x direction, right? If it's speeding up, and it is, 
that Newton's second law is going to be applied. Where in again in the y direction, this thing's balanced on the on the ground. So we know that Newton's first law applies, and that's what's going on here, to the y direction because the normal force and mg are balanced. Okay, and then when we write an equation about, or 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 essentially what we do is we take this part of the equation, this part of the equation, and what do we do? We fill it in from our free body diagram, right? We look at our free body diagram, fill in those forces, and then we're able to write these equations. Go watch, I have a video on free body diagrams and equations, okay? So go watch that video, that's not what this is about. But the point is, is that after we net all these vectors together, we get this superposition. Essentially, there's, we can, we can take, draw one vector, that that represents all these vectors but but more importantly the vector in the in the x direction and that's what that's what's going on here okay this is our net vector this is our superposition vector for speeding up what about when we're slowing down same situation okay now we're sliding we're moving this way the box is moving to the right or the positive x direction but there's no see there's no force here it's not there Right, the only force that's in the x direction is this friction, and it's opposite of the way we're moving. Friction's pointing this way, we're moving this way. Okay, or the box is moving that way. And so we know that that friction is going to slow it down because there's, and we know the friction is going to be acting as a net force because it's the only force in the x direction. So just like above, right? We want to make sure that we're able to draw a net vector or superposition vector, and we know that the normal force and mg are balanced right and watch the newton's first law video if you don't know what i'm talking about and so we use that idea for the y direction and there's not going to be any superposition vector for the y direction and then the x direction right we know that friction right is the f net i wrote it as f net but we know it's friction that's the only force in the x direction and if you're not too sure when you write the 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 equation out the free body diagram it'll represent that right here it's saying that friction is giving us that that rate of change of motion so just this is how you i just want to make sure you understand how to how to use newton's law uh, newton's law but again there's a different video to show you how to do that i just want to show you the two situations essentially what should you be taking away here less about the free body diagrams and more about these two statements on here okay First statement, speeding up, net force and displacement are in the same direction. That's how you know an object speeding up. The second statement is net force and displacement are in opposite directions. That's how you know an object is slowing down. Okay, those are the things you need to really be taking away. The free body diagrams will take practice, and they're on a different video that really shows you how to, how to do it. Okay, but anyway. That's how that works. Okay, and so, uh, uh, oops, before we get there. So just coming back here, looking at this equation, right? I was just describing the, the different situations of force and, and, and net force and, and, and direction of motion and how they're related, right? But when we look at this equation, it also has some values in it, right? We see that, okay, well, this net force, this is the applied force, right? This is what's being applied, right? And then we have mass and acceleration. Well, mass, right, we should know what mass is. If not, it's down here. Right, mass is not weight. Mass is a weight is a force. Mass is not a force. Okay, mass is not a force. Weight is a force, and mass is not weight. What's mass? If you use the density equation, it really gives you the best idea. And what this density equation is telling us is that mass is equal to the density times volume, or essentially how many atoms are in the container. That's what mass is. How many atoms are in a certain container? That gives us the mass of an object. So you as a human being are made of a ton of atoms, right? In a, in a specific container, right? Volume container. And you have a mass because of that. Okay, so that's what mass is. And it's not a force. Mass doesn't, can't be applied to things. Okay, you have mass regardless of force. Okay. And, and, uh, and, and then also know that this, this, this term out here, this mass times acceleration, which is what this is saying, it's not a force, okay? So you hear this MA, mass times acceleration. It's not a force, okay? Not a force, okay? It's just equal to the net force vector. It's just equal to the net force vector, okay? So 
just keep that in mind, okay, when you look at this. But, you know, when you multiply mass times acceleration together, it's going to have a direction and it's going to have a magnitude and it's going to be equal to the direction and magnitude of that force, okay? But mass times acceleration is not a force, okay? Only things like tension and friction and stuff like that are forces, okay? Now, also keep in mind, right, before we talk about acceleration, right, we're going to talk about it here in two seconds, is that when we're applying net force to an object, you got to be very careful about, like, what's being stated, okay? So constant net forces, I'm just going to continue to drive this home because a lot of this is a huge misconception for students, okay? Students think that when you apply a constant net force to an object, that's just what is required to make the thing move, but it's not, right? We saw with Newton's first law, right? Newton's first law told us that when, when objects are, you know, have, have a balanced force, I have it right here, okay? When, when objects are balanced, okay, have a balanced, balanced forces, they're going to either be at constant velocity or at rest. So that means that they have forces applied to them. Okay, they have forces being applied to them. So if you have a constant net force, not just force, and that's why these, these words are so important, but if you have a constant net force, that will cause an object to speed up, slow down, or change direction continually. Okay, just keep that in mind, okay? Constant net forces cause changes in motion or constant changes in motion, or if you have a net force, there's gonna be some change in motion associated with that, either speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction, right? And so I just have this example here to make sure this usually sets at home with most of my students, and I'm sure it'll work with you, right? Is that, you know, if we have an object, okay? So this first situation up here, right? The object's speeding up, that's what this is saying. Okay, and, and what the question would be like, okay, is you have an object with a certain net force applied to it, and then that net force decreases, which is this picture over here. Okay, now when they say the net force decreases, right, I have right here written above in green, decrease in force. Okay, when we said the net force decreases, okay, that doesn't mean it changes direction, that just means there's less of a net force. So it's going to still continue to both these situations, the object's going to speed up. Just because the, the, net, the net force decrease doesn't mean something wild happened. The object's still going to speed up. It's just the acceleration or the rate of change in motion, how fast or slow it speeds up or slows down, that decreases. So over here, right, you were speeding up at a certain rate. You're speeding up very fast. But then the net force decreases. So you're still speeding up, still speeding up over here, just not as fast. You're still speeding up, just not as fast. Okay, and that's the thing to, when we say that the net force decreases, which is what this is saying right here, okay? So again, you have a certain net force applied and then that net force decreases. Well, all that means is the value of the net force. Now, if we said that the net force changes direction, then that means that it, it, it went from pointing this way to now pointing this way, okay? But we didn't say that. We just said the, the net force decreases, not changes direction, decreases. And so if it decreases, that just means the magnitude went down, the direction didn't change. So, but, there, but we're still saying that there's a net force there, right? It just went down a little bit. It didn't go to zero, it just went down. So the object's still gonna speed up. And then same thing down here, right? If I have a certain net force, right? Now here we see, right? Remember I told you to remember when net force is opposite of the way we're moving, right? Then that means that we're slowing down. And that's what we see here. So net force is opposite the way we're moving. Then again, we say that that net force that's opposite the direction we're moving decreases. Well, that doesn't mean something weird happens, okay? We still continue to slow down both these situations, right, in this situation too. Both of these situations, we're still slowing down. It's just the force decrease. It didn't, now, again, if we said it changed direction, then that means the object would, if, if we said the net force changed direction, that means the object would start to speed up, right? But we didn't. We just said that the, the net force 
decreased when we look at this. So see how the force vector is smaller than this one, So it's but it's still in the same direction. So the object's still going to slow down, but just not as fast. The acceleration will be less. Okay, so keep that in mind is that net forces will make objects speed up and slow down and change direction. But the magnitudes of those net forces dictate how fast they do that, how fast an object speeds up, how fast it slows down, how fast it changes direction. And what, we're, what I'm saying right now, the, the thing that I'm talking about right now, that's acceleration. Okay, so what is acceleration? It's an object's rate of change in motion. Okay, that's what you need to, that's what you'll find in a textbook if you look it up. But that's not a good way to think of it. The better way to think about it's right here. Okay, right here. Uh, can I do it in yellow? Right here, this thing, where it says acceleration is how fast or slow an object speeds up, slows down, or changes direction. Okay, that's what acceleration is. You can't think of it any way else, okay? And again, you've walked into this class with probably not quite the correct way of thinking about things, okay? And acceleration is usually one for every student. They have the wrong idea of what acceleration is, okay? So acceleration isn't a force. See, I have it written down here at the bottom. Acceleration is not a force. It cannot make objects speed up or slow down, change direction. If we ask you, if an object speeds up, and we ask you why that object speed up and you and you say, oh, because of the acceleration. No, that's wrong. Acceleration can't make anything do anything. Look at the definition right here. Acceleration is how fast or slow an object speeds up, slows down or changes direction. It's a rate. It's a rate. It's a value, right? Another way to think about it, I have it down here in the green is it says acceleration. It's at the very bottom of the page. Acceleration is the measure of the effect of the net a measure of the effect the net force has on the object, which is another kind of good way to think. You can think, okay, the net force is the thing that makes things speed up, slow down, or change direction. The acceleration is kind of the measure of that, right? When we look at this equation, we apply this net force, okay? But the ob, this is the, the mass is the object, right? And the, the acceleration is, 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 the, is the rate of change of motion with that object. When you multiply the rate of change in motion, not the force, the rate of change in motion times the mass of the object, you get the same magnitude. You get a number that's going to be equal to the net force. Okay, but acceleration nor mass is a force. Okay. And so this is very important that you understand this, okay? So acceleration is not a force. It cannot make objects speed up or slow down or change direction. Essentially, acceleration is the measure of the effect of the net, that the net force has on an object, okay? That acceleration is, is, is a rate. It's a value. That's all it is. It doesn't cause things to happen, okay? Again, the best way to think about it is right here, right up here, where we say acceleration is how fast or slow an object speeds up, slows down, or changes direction, okay? And, and just so you know, I have written here, but how Newton wrote his second law. He didn't even write it as MA. Newton did not write sum of forces are equal to MA. Dude did not write that. What he wrote was that the, ch the rate of change in momentum, that's what that is. So delta P is change in momentum, and it's equal to mass times change in velocity. And so what he wrote is the rate of change in momentum, that's what this equation is right here, is the net force is equal to the rate of change in momentum. And then when you, when you, you know, substitute mass times velocity into this equation here, you get, let me do it in a different color, you get this equation, right? And we can clearly see that in this equation, there's velocity times time, right? Well, we know, you know from the graphs, you derive this equation, right? The acceleration is equal to delta V over delta T. And so that's why we're able to write this equation, or that's why you see this equation written the way that we write it today, okay? But that's what acceleration is, okay? And that's what essentially Newton laws are, okay? So that's what you need to know, or Newton's second law is, okay? So there's nothing more to say here. That's what you got to understand. That's, that's really, you know, uh, what this video has to say. So, so I hope it was helpful. Again, just keep in mind, like Newton laws are, again, are just trying to relate forces to, 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 to motion. The, Newton's first law is trying to relate 
net forces to either objects at rest or objects at constant velocity. But the second law is trying to relate net forces to objects speeding up, slowing down, or changes direction, okay? So I hope you enjoyed it. I'm super, super proud of you. Uh, and I hope to see you on the next video.